<laughs> Hi, my name is Julio Salgado. Uh, I'm an undocumented queer activist, originally from North Long Beach, based in Berkeley, California. And I just really want to give a, a shout out to Culture Strike. And, and I'm just so excited to be part of, of, of that group. I feel lucky and I feel blessed. So thank you, Culture Strike. And uh, I hope you know we keep uh, making art together. <laughs> What could happen uh, when someone undocumented engages in civil disobedience? Mm -hmm. um, and how did you begin to uh, work on some of the uh, deportation campaigns? A lot of students were stopping deportations with, uh, you know, with, you know, doing, you know, they were sending um, petitions, yeah, online petitions. And when I was, I, I was looking at a lot of those petitions, they were like coming up on my Facebook uh, uh, news feeds, and I was like, what can I do? When I was, I was looking at each one of those cases, and I was like. That could be my, mo my mom, my dad, that could be me, that could be my sister. And so we're all, you know, all in this boat together. And, and, and when I would look at them, I was like, I, I need to do something. So I started making some of the, the images that, that, um, that people follow. It was, it was the, the community sort of like, you know, saying, hey, you know, we're not, <laughs> nobody's going to come and rescue us. You know, we got to sort of like do it on our own. What happened here was like there was a, a collaboration of, of organizers, and I was just kind of like, this is what I can do. Let's like let's work together. So I I'm I'm glad. I mean, a lot of the deportations were stopped because of the people insisting and calling and 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 uh, and I, I just felt that, you know, I discovered that I was like, you know, I, the the importance of of art. It's not just to create a pretty picture. Well, also, you know, Julio, this this past weekend you were at SF Pride and you were leading uh, one of the undocu queer contingents, uh, and and the banner said uh, President Obama. Um, uh, I was like, thank you, but thank hold up. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank but you, but we actually want full legalization, not just not just right. your word, not just like a piece of speech. <laughs> it was just like, yeah, and I mean, <laughs> I I mean, one of the reasons why I was like, I was like, when they asked me, they're like, uh, Olga Talamante from uh, the Latina Chicano Foundation. She was like, do you want to be part of this? And I was like, yes. The reason I said yes was because I went to the Long Beach Pride. I grew up in Long Beach. I'm from Long Beach. And, uh, and one of the first floats that I saw at the, at the Pride uh, event, at the parade, was the Wells Fargo um, uh, float. Yes, that was my first reaction. Me and my mom, because my mom went with me, and I was like, we were booing. We were booing at the Wells Fargo uh, uh, float. And some of the some of uh, some of my fellow queers behind me, they were like, "Why are you booing? This is not the this is not the place to boo." I was like, "Do you know that they like Wells Fargo? You know, I was like throwing on the story of Wells Fargo, how they you know they invest in in, in corporations that um, that that gain from the, the the separation of our families." And some people were like, "Well, at least they support one part of you." And I was like, no, they don't. And so I was really excited to actually be in the parade. And, and instead of a Wells Fargo flow, like, they have my art. So it was, it was, really, it was really cool to, to uh, it was kind of like, you know, F you, Wells Fargo, now I'm here. Can you talk about, you know, you say sometimes that you're, you came out of two closets. What do you see as your role in really advancing both causes or intersecting them? Why, do, why is this a subject that you approach in your art? When I was at the, at the parade, when I was at Long Beach Pride and I saw that Wells Fargo, and when I saw the reaction from some of, you know, some of the, uh, the queer people there, and I was like, this is why we have to intersect, you know, because people sometimes in, in, in both, you know, groups were, you know, were so invested in like, you know, you have to do gay marriage, you know, you, we want to join the army, you know, and, and it was just like, you know, there's more than that to being queer, you know, some of us, you know, are more worried about not seeing my mom tomorrow than, you know, getting married. And so uh, I, I thought it was really important to, to point also, out like some of the key individuals that were behind uh, this movement, you know, a lot of them were queer, you know, a lot of them were we're saying not only are we undocumented, but we're also queer. And, and, and I, think, I think one of the reasons is because we know what it's like to come out of the closet and we know what it's like to, to sort of like have a secret and, 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 and sort of, you know, find people who are going to support you. And, and then a lot of the, you know, the quotes that you see in the images, you know, are quotes from people. Because I was like, 
how, why do you want to say it? I mean, what does it mean to be undocumented and queer, you know? D different people send me their, their quotes, and, you know, and it was, like, really interesting how, you know, what it meant for them, and, and so that's, I wanted to do that. I wanted to illustrate that. And w uh, which closet did you come out of first? Uh, I came out first as cool, as undocumented, oh. because I knew, I, it was like, uh, when I was in, in high school, I knew a lot of people who were undocumented, and then, um, you know, and then slowly I would come out, we know that friend, that female friend always, who's like, you know, really close to you. It was like, you know, through some female friends when I was in high school, and then, <laughs> and then when I was like 18, my mom... <laughs> I think it's a really funny story. Uh, my mom found out that I was that I was that I was queer um, through a, through a journal. So when I was in the eighth grade, uh, my best friend told me he was bisexual, and so like I wrote it in my little journal, and and I, I you know I thought I lost the journal or whatever. And like a few years later, when I was eighteen, my mom came up to me and she was like, "Can I ask you something?" I was like, "What?" Uh, I accidentally. Um, <laughs> was going through some old stuff, and I found this, and it accidentally opened in this place. She's like, are you still having thoughts about who you are? I was like, okay, yeah, mom, I'm, I'm, I'm queer, and I'm gay, and, and so she was cool with it. I'm really lucky that she was, yeah, uh, yeah, very lucky. You know, you, you share this with your parents, and tell us, like, what, what did they say? Well, <laughs> yeah, my mom called me, and she was like, she was screaming, she was like, oh my god, you know, like, and I was like, Mom, hold on, you know, like, I was, I was being all like, I was like, let me be, let's be real, Ma, because like, last year, they said they were going to start with deportation, she's like, why do you have to be so negative all the time, like, you know, this is a good thing, and so, I was like, yeah, you know, it's, I mean, it was, it was a bittersweet celebration, I think, for a lot of us, because, um, you know, this is what we, you know, what we've been working for, for a long time, you know, a lot of, a lot of undocumented people uh, have been working for, for the past 10 years, and a lot of people mm -hmm. have aged out. You know, they will not benefit, you know, from this. One of them being the person who wrote that, you know, cover. He's not going to benefit. My parents are not going to benefit from it. And so I think, I think a lot of us are very, you know, like, when we actually get the thing, the paper, and, and, and but we want more than just, uh, you know, like, yeah, here, you know, be happy with this. It's like, it has to be more than that because as immigrants to this country, we, contri we contribute a lot. And, and, and for, for, for the president and for, for this administration to say, I'm only going to give you a piece of the pie that you help cook, it's BS. And so I think we should like really make sure that our families um, you know, are protected as well. The issue of immigration is never going to stop. I, I think you know, when as immigrants, we're always going to be seen as the, as the other. And, um, and, you know, the fact that, I mean, there was that recent poll that, you know, babies are now the, the majority of, of, of immigrant babies are you know, the majority of being, you know, born in this country. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, I just want to make sure that the community doesn't get, um, you know, taken advantage of. And, and, and I think right now I'm, like, living in the present. I'll think about the future when I actually get the thing, <laughs> if it actually happened, and make sure that, that we know that, you know, this is not it, that we're going to continue to, to fight and, and, uh, and, and make sure that, that our families are also um, included in everything. And Julio, you know, one of your pieces that people love is the one that you have of your parents. Can you talk about, for you in particular, your family story? A lot of us have been guilty of, of saying, you know, I'm in this country, it wasn't my fault, it was my parents' fault. You know, and what we're saying that, it's like we're, we're helping this narrative of criminalizing parents for, for being responsible and courageous. And so I, I really wanted to, um, it was a friend of mine from LA, um, her name is Nancy Mesa, she's like an awesome uh, uh, organizer and activist from LA, and she was like, um, no, like, you know, our, we're he our parents were here because our parents are responsible and courageous, and I just thought that that was, like, really, like, an awesome, you know, thing to, to put on a piece of art, and, and, and that's why I, I really wanted to pay a homage to, to all of our parents. You know, a lot of people come from single-parent homes, you know, from uh, same-sex households, so that, it's, it's a really personal image because it's my family, it's my parents, and that actually was based on a photograph that we took when we came here to the U.S. in 1995, and we lost that picture. I don't know what happened to it, but it always stayed in my mind. And so I, I wanted to recreate it. So I thought it was really interesting. I was like, okay, I'm going to recreate this, this images and call it undocumented apparel and, and have some of the quotes from, from different folks that, you know, some folks that I met. And I was like, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to be undocumented? And some of the quotes are really confrontational. Um, like the one from Yosimar, he's like, I'm just a little immigrant, you know, uh, God bless America with three Ks. And, uh, and so... 
and they were really confrontational on purpose because I felt that that um, you know if we're gonna be used if our image is gonna be used to sell shirts we should be the ones saying how we want to be represented so after I started posting some of them you know people were sharing them on tumblr on Facebook and then I got an email from the from the creative director of American Apparel and I was like oh shit I'm getting sued and <laughs> So I was, I, I, I was kind of hesitant to call her, and she was, she was really nice on the phone, and, and she started, um, she was like, you know, she started listing all the great things that American Apparel has done for the community, and, and it's like, I love it. No, that's great. That's awesome. And that's exactly why people are pissed off, because you as an ally should know better than that. And so the fact that she didn't understand, and the fact that American Apparel came out and said, we don't know what the big deal is. Um, that's what pissed me off because they were mad that we were analyzing this image, we're criticizing this image, and they're like, "What immigrants thinking? What?" I think that that that's what kind of you know they they were they were not expecting that, and so um, and so I had to explain to her, I had to break it down to her, and I was like, you know, have you ever heard of you know cultural appropriation, and have you heard of all these things? And she's like, um, I don't know. I was like, how was the person? Because then she turned it into me. She was like, maybe you're killing Raul's 15 minutes of fame, you know, like. <laughs> Why are you, you know, maybe he's happy to be on a cover on a, you know, on a, I was like, have you asked Raul how he feels? You know, have you, have you talked to him? And I was like, how was he involved in the whole process? And she was like, well, he shows the shirt. <laughs> I was like, I just, I was like, okay, whatever. And then I was like, so she was like, what do you want? Like, I mean, I wasn't asking for anything. Like they were, they were like, we'll print, we'll print the shirts. I was like, no, you should apologize to people. You should like, you should say that, you know, you messed up and, you know, and, and, and sort of like recover your, your street cred, but they never did, so I'm gonna keep making them. Great, well thank you very much, Julio. <laughs> thank you.